Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Regular viewers will know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Well recently I purchased the Nikon Z50 which I have here. Now this is Nikon's APS-C camera within the Z series range. I've got the two Z6s but I wanted a compact camera, well, a more compact camera uh, for going out and about. And also I thought I'd just try it out, you know. So I went and purchased the Z50. I've done one sort of introduction review on the Z50, but I didn't include any images on it, simply because I'd only had the camera two days, maybe a day and a half, and the weather was so crap I hadn't been out and about. I did get a few comments saying they thought the camera was weather sealed and, you know, it could cope with um, uh, bad weather. Well, that's completely true. I'm not quite sure that's true with the FTZ adapter fitted because uh, at the moment I've got it fitted as you can see here with the Nikon uh, 18 to 105, uh, yeah, 18 to 105 DX lens, which is designed for the um, F mount cameras such as the 7100, 7000, 7200, uh, 5000, is it? I'm not sure. Um, but I bought it because of two reasons. Firstly, it's got VR, where the Z-mount lenses don't have vibration reduction. This one has, um, and it was a very convenient range. 18 to 105 covers a very wide range. But I was down to f3.5 uh, to 5.6. So uh, yeah, 3.5 to 5.6. So um, we actually went into a museum, which was very low light. So I had to crank up the ISO, and this is what I'm gonna show you. Um, but yeah, no, I had many, uh, well, not many, quite a few people say, I thought the camera was weather sealed. Why didn't you go out in the rain anyway? Well, unfortunately, I'm not weather sealed and I'm more of a fair weathered person than a, you know, go out in the rain just to test the camera. But I didn't want to test it with the FTZ adapter mounted anyway. Um, I could have taken along one of my Z lenses, but I didn't. I just took this lens. So we're going to show you what I thought and think of this Z50. Um, the handling was great. I had no issues with the handling whatsoever. Being able to adjust the settings, uh, the ISO particularly, um, and you know all those kind of things work very, very well. So if you want to look at what settings this camera has and what it can do, revert back to my um, other video. Um, I didn't use the tilty realty screen. Well, I used it for tilting upwards like that if I was doing any low angle shots but I didn't actually do any um, sort of selfie stuff with it like that. That didn't appeal to me. Um, I don't think it will appeal to me, to be honest. But um, looking at the images, if we get back to the images, um, I was absolutely over the moon with how well it did handle low light. And it was a real challenge. Um, we went to, in Swindon, our local designer outlet centre, first of all, um, and if you just look at this, this is, I think this was 500, yeah, 560 ISO. So it was a really crap day, but 560 ISO and clean. Which you would expect at 560, because that's not particularly high these days. But, um, so that, that, was, that was good for me. At least that was clean. Um, in moderate conditions, like 500 ISO out in the garden, Lovely sharp. That wasn't the um, oh, that was a 70 to 300. So that's an f4.5 lens. Yeah, what was that set at? Um, 250th of a second f7.1. Um, but again, you know, absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah, no problems with that at all. So, um, in you know, poor light and reasonable, well, that's quite good light, that's sunlight. So that's a 200th of a second ISO 250. Lovely sharp images, lovely colors, absolutely, absolutely super. So um, it isn't really in, you know, if you've got good light, uh, you're not gonna have any issues anyway. That's pretty much the case with all cameras. I'm not singling out the Nikon on this occasion. Um, but let's get into some lower light situations. Now again, this is a uh, 560 ISO. Absolutely lovely, lovely colors, nice and sharp. And 
to be honest, the 18 to 105 is a cheap lens. It isn't, you know, the sharpest kit on the block. So when you look at the sharpness here, it's pretty impressive that it's come off of a lens that is so cheap to buy, you know. Um, and it's a nice lens because it it's very light, not very heavy, and it covers a good range. So um, that is, you know, I think that's very interesting. But, you know, at 500 see, you see a little bit of noise creeping in. You can just see, just, oh, it might not be tricky to say, but... Um, yeah, very happy with that in, in overall. Um, again, you look at these images here, 1100 ISO. Again, they're, you know, clean. You look at the shadows, there's a wee bit of noise there. Yeah, you can see a little bit of break up there. But to be honest, that's ever so easy to sort out in Lightroom. If we look at, um, if we go to our filters, I've actually done a, um, I've created a preset for ISO. So if we click on that, that's pretty much gone now, well it has gone. And it still retained the sharpness. So yeah. Um, a little bit of noise reduction if you need to, but that's 1100 ISO and it's still, I think anyone would agree that's, I'm not saying the composition or the photograph itself is great, um, but because it, it isn't, but if you look at the texture, the colors, the sharpness, you know, absolutely, absolutely super. Um, again, 560 ISO, we know that one to be fine. Right, 5600 ISO. Now, that's pretty high up the Richter scale, really, isn't it? You know, so um, again, absolutely fine. Now, I have applied a bit of noise reduction here. So that's with a noise reduction on. Let's show you what. So you can see there, there is noise in the image. And there's, to be honest, there's quite a bit of noise in the image. But at 5,600 on an APS-C sensor, um, kind of expect that. You can see here around her neck, there's a fair bit of colour break up there. But a bit of noise reduction, gone. You know, nice clean image. And that's perfectly printable, perfectly usable. Um, and I think that's lovely, you know, and that's at 5,600 ISO. You go through the range 5,000 ISO, same story. Nice skin tones. Um, the eyes, lovely and sharp. And again, I've got to keep re reiterating, but it isn't a um, top of the range uh, Z mount lens. It isn't a really expensive lens, you know. Um, so if you're getting results like this on, you know, a run of a mill lens, I think that's phenomenal. I really do. Um, Go to here, 11,400 ISO. And that's a pretty high ISO setting. Um, and the conditions were atrocious. I mean, they're really dull and really dark. Um, absolutely fine. Again, if you look at, that's how it's come out of the camera. You can see there's a lot of noise there. You know, a fair chunk of noise, certainly in the shadows is where the noise normally is. Bit of, bit of noise reduction, gone. That's a nice, you know, that's a nice image. It's sharp, perfectly printable, again, very usable. Again, this one here, 10,000 ISO. That's completely fine, isn't it? You know, another quick zoom in in the shadows again, you know, fine. 10,000, so, you know, we keep going through these and you can see also, the eye detect and the face detect was excellent. Um, I was very, it did, sometimes it did hunt, you know, but, and, and occasionally um, it would pick out a, a face that isn't there. You would think there's a face there and there isn't a face there. But overall, 90 odd, well, 95%, maybe higher than that. Boom, straight onto the face, straight onto the eye. Absolutely super. Um, yeah, I was very, very impressed with the face and eye detect. I've got no issues with that whatsoever. 
yeah, very, very confident with that. Um, but uh, again, you know, nice and sharp. And that's 14,400 ISO. Again, that's going to be, what's that? 12,800. You know, these can be printed. Well, I'd probably turn, you know, some of these to black and white because I think they, you know, would make a quite a nice black and white, you know, image. Um, so, yeah. Again, that one there, I've adjusted the white balance on that one. It was a very mixed white balance on that one. But 12,800 ISO. Yeah, very green, very, very green. So I've just adjusted it a bit to bring back the colour of the uh, work surface, you know. Um, come back outdoors and um, we're back to, yeah, 500 ISO. And as you can see, no, again, I'm not saying the image is great. I'm just saying the... ISO is great. So, yeah, the Nikon Z50 handles um, ISO, I think, very, very well. Very well. Um, I have also compared it to my uh, Canon M6 Mark II. Now, theory tells me the M6 Mark II should be worse because there's more pixels on the sensor. It's a 32 megapixel sensor. Um, in reality, when you see the video I've done on the M6 Mark II and you look at those images, um, they're damn good as well. So, you know, um, both these cameras, this is a really tiny little camera, but it hasn't got a viewfinder. You have to, you know, connect a viewfinder to it. Where the Z50, you know, has got um, a viewfinder. And it's um, a really good quality viewfinder, 2.3 million dot viewfinder. And it is very, very good, yeah. Very pleased with that. Um, it's not as big uh, as you would get on the Z6, but then you wouldn't expect that because the Z6 and the Z7 are full frame sensors. This is an APS-C sensor. But um, yeah, great, great little camera. I say the handling was great. Um, the eye autofocus and the face detect was um, absolutely, I wouldn't say exceptional, um, but it was certainly very good. I didn't miss anything, you know. Um, and the FTZ adapter performs beautifully. You know, if you're concerned about buying a Z50 or a Z6 and 7, because you, you know, you, you're a Nikon user and you've got quite a bit of Nikon glass and you're a bit concerned how well does the Z50 perform um, and the Z6, um, and I think the Z7 as well, but um, how they perform with the FTZ adapter, I can honestly and confidently tell you they perform flawlessly. Um, I, I, I'm I not convinced they perform flawlessly with Sigma and Tamron lenses. I'm not 100% sure about that because I've only got one Sigma lens. It works fine with that one. Um, but I, I'm a bit nervous about using Sigma and uh, Tamron lenses with the FTZ adapter. But Nikon lenses, if you stick to Nikon lenses, they're not expensive. Um, this second hand, this 18 to 105 um, in mint condition, I bought from a company called MPB, uh, MPB Europe. Uh, they're based in Brighton in the UK. And I got this from them for 100 and, was it 105 quid, 110 quid, something like that, about 110 quid. And what a range it covers, 18 to 105 and, and you know, mint condition. So um, they're not expensive to get. And these are the sort of images that... Um, the sort of quality images you'll get from the 18 to 105 lens. Um, great lens, very lightweight, but the, the camera itself is, is great. It didn't have any issues with, you know, only having one SD card. Um, it just locks in by the battery compartment. Um, that didn't annoy me. Um, battery life. Battery life was excellent. Um, that did surprise me. I've only got the one battery because uh, they're still not available. The EL25 batteries are still not available, but it's still showing me, um, well, you're not gonna see that, but it's still showing me full full battery. And I haven't put this battery on charge uh, since I got back from this shoot. And that was probably from about 10 in the morning till about three in the afternoon that we were taking photographs for. Um, I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, 
So there we go. That's uh, my initial thoughts uh, photographic wise. Didn't take any video on the day. I was planning to, but I never got around to it. Um, but uh, that's my initial thoughts on the Z50 image quality, uh, uh, poor to low light, you know, and high ISOs. Yeah, you do get noise. How can you get around that? Um, you need a very big sensor. Um, I haven't fully tested, oddly enough, I haven't fully tested the Z6s. I've been out a lot of times taking photographs with the Z6s, but not in particularly in low light. That's the Nikon Z50. But I'm delighted that I purchased it. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this of some use. Um, and I hope that's clarified some of the comments that I've had saying, where are the images taken on the Z50? Well, here are um, a day out on with the Z50. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this channel. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Uh, that's very appreciated. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. There's always more content uh, to do with cameras, audio equipment, microphones, etc., etc. So thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.